Traditionally, queues would be used to man manage and route work items. So if you think about it in a traditional sense, think of a customer service team that's working on a variety of cases or tickets, as well as types of activities. So emails, phone calls, tasks, etc. So cases and activities are the two entities by default that are enabled for queues, but in a little bit, we're gonna talk about how you can enable them for other types of entities as well. So there's two different views here in the queues area that you can change. So the first one is items I'm working on. I have not currently picked anything to work on, so I'm gonna change this view to items available to work on which would probably be where I'm gonna start if I'm looking for work for my day as a customer service rep, for example. And I've set up a tier one queue for this example. And so these are all the available items to be worked on in the tier one queue. And you can see that there's a variety of different activities and cases in this list. So I'm gonna go ahead and select a case. You can do this either by selecting it from the view or opening it up. And I'm going to show you how this pick process works. So when you're using a queue, you can pick an item to indicate that you're going to take it and work on it. So this can be handy to show the rest of your team members that you're working on it so that they don't also try to work on it at the same time. It's going to pop open this window and here it'll let you decide uh, whether or not you want to remove it from the queue, that would really just be a business process decision that your company would need to make about how you want to use them. But I'm going to go ahead and let it default to no here. Um, we're going to keep this in the queue. I'm just going to pick it to work on it. So now I'm indicating that I'm going to work this case. Now, if I switch back to the view items I am working on, you'll see that I have that case in this list. So something that it creates behind the scenes when an item is in a queue is a record called the queue item details, which I'm gonna pop open here. We're gonna take a look at it. So this record tracks things like what queue is it in, who's currently working on it, when did it enter the queue, when was it last modified? Um, and so that can be handy from a tracking perspective. Another nice thing to know about queues is that you can associate a mailbox to them. And when you do that, you can set it up so that any incoming emails that are going to that mailbox can automatically create uh, email activity that goes into that queue. So some organizations, you know, decide to manage all their incoming support emails, for example, through a queue in Serum versus, you know, an Outlook inbox or something like that. Another more robust feature of queues are routing rules. So you can establish rules that move the items, such as a case, from one queue to another um, automatically. You can also set up rules that route items from a queue to a user or team as well. And if you go and look at setting up a routing rule, it uses conditions that look just like the filter criteria we have when we're using an advanced find. So the one last thing that I think is special about queues that I just want to make sure to highlight is that it is the only place in customer engagement where you can natively have a list that has multiple different record types or entity types in one list. So there's no other place in the system, again, out of the box where you can have a list that's going to show you cases, emails, tasks, you know, any different type of activity all in one list. So the other thing I want to talk about here is that you can also uh, enable queues for other out of the box entities or custom entities. So something I've done is I went to the entity metadata and I enabled queues for quotes. Now you have to be a little bit careful because you this is a setting that once you turn it on, you cannot turn it off. But the nice thing about this is that you can have other types of records routing to queues as well. So here you can see I have a quote in a queue. So let's talk a little bit about why people wouldn't use a queue or what people don't like about queues. So one complaint I've heard is that there is no like auto refresh on your queue page. So 
if you have a lot of items coming in, you know, the person working this list would have to refresh the page in order to see, you know, the most recent list. Um, so that's something that some organizations don't love. Um, another thing about them is that sometimes they're just overkill. So there's no reason why you couldn't just use a view and an owner and accomplish a very similar thing to queues. So here I've created my unassigned active cases list. So this would be an alternative to using a queue. You could have all of your open active cases here listed. We're showing the owner they're all system, they're unassigned. And then you could just take this and assign it to whoever is going to work on it. So I'm going to go ahead and assign this one to me. And that would be a way to indicate that that was an item that was being worked on. Now, again, the big difference here is that you only have cases in this list. You're not going to be able to, you know, pull activity types or other entity types into the same view here.